Let's start the interview. Are you ready? Sure. <laughs> okay. I am here with Ryan Harrell for our, I believe, Ryan, this is our third? Yeah, that's the third right? time. Our third interview, our last two interviews. Um, people love our interviews. You're such a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I'm, some people say, a wealth of knowledge. So when we get in the same... <laughs> Um, although I will, I will confess that in the last two interviews, I have tried to like pin you down because I try to boil things down to conclusions that people can take home and can do stuff with. And you have refused to be <laughs> pinned down. I asked you, what's the difference between a 2306 and a 2207? And then we did an hour, but we never actually answered the question. I, I have no reason to believe today is going to be any different. And yet... <laughs> Nevertheless, I feel like these interviews are some of my favorite things to do. And today, what I want to do, I want to do two things today. Number one is I want to show people your Motor Explorer, which is on your website. It is an incredibly valuable tool for comparing the performance of motors against each other. Uh, and for all the talking I do about your website, um, miniquadtestbench.com, I have never actually showed that. But number two, I want to take three very similar motors – which are the, the Hype Train, the original 2400, 2450 kV Hype Train, the Hype Train LaDrib, which is a 2550 kV version of the same motor, and the Bot Grinder, Grinder Hype Train motor, because these are three motors with very, very similar construction. They're all 2306 motors, um, the, but they also have different sort of performance, and I think that's a great way to both sort of focus on the Motor Explorer and what you can learn from it, as well as these motors, which I think have, there's a very, I think the results are a little surprising, uh, what these motors, how these motors perform. What do you think yeah. of all that? <laughs> um, well, I haven't actually tested the LaDrib yet. It's on the bench and it should be being tested probably this weekend. Um, but I have everything else in there and I have some other motors that would be similar to the LaDrib in terms of, uh, construction, stator size and KV. So, um, those yeah. would be interesting to look at, but we can still, we can we can definitely check out uh, check out all of that. Yeah, was because well, I actually thought you had tested the Ladrib. I guess I was wrong about that. But the um, the hype trains are OEM'd by well the the hype train and the hype train Ladrib are OEM'd by T Motor, and I believe they are in some ways similar to the T Motor F forty three. Is that right? Uh, it would be the actually they're kind of they're they're fairly close to the F forty Pros. Hmm. The original F40 Pro is probably would be the thing they're closest to. Um, they're kind of halfway between the F40 Pro 2s and the the F40 Pros, I would say. Um, it's it's hard to nail down without looking at the data exactly. But, hey, we can look at that. In, in yeah, the exactly. See. And then the, the, the Bach grinders are OEM'd by LD Power, uh, mm -hmm. is my understanding. And uh, although they're 2306, and although they have very similar, at least the label says they have a similar KV to the original hype train. So some people said, well, what's the difference except for the fact that one's green and has Bach grinder's name on it? Well, haha, uh -huh, that's what we're here. So do you want to pull up the motor explorer and, and, and share your screen and look at it? How, where should we go from here? Sure. Um, I actually, let me see if I can share my screen here and, and I can show, I can talk a little bit about the different charts that are on the motor explorer and what kind of each one is going to be good at showing you. Um, okay. There's a lot, there's a lot of different data here. You know, we're, we're looking at a lot of different things. So, Love it. Go ahead and share out this screen here. Okay. Looking right. good. I see you're sharing your screen, and this is your website, miniquadtestbench.com. And in case people don't know, uh, Ryan is the source. He tests motors for everybody, and he's got a test bench that allows you to really get a lot of valuable data to do comparisons of these motors. Um, you used to test ESCs, but not so much anymore because I think ESCs all kind of perform the same. Yeah, I mean, I've done some similar, some some back-to-back -back testing recently on BL Heli uh, 32 and some of the new stuff, but there's just not enough variance anymore to justify the the time consumption that it takes uh, to, to do those tests. So I kind of, I'll periodically do a, you know, a benchmark test just to see if there's anything new that I should be looking at. Um, and I've done some some other tests, uh, maybe we can talk about this later on, um, looking at some of the uh, variables in the ESCs that can be changed, uh, but I haven't published that yet, um, but there's some interesting stuff there. Um, yeah, I'd love to talk about that. I've actually been, I've actually been wanting to do a BL Heli 32 video for the longest time, so maybe we can, uh, maybe we can do that next. 
uh, you know, on our next video. Sounds like a plan. Awesome. So let's take a look at your motor data. So uh, for, first of all, you do reviews of the motors and you have a section of the website where you just talk about individual motors. And I actually right. like that because for people who don't want to look at a chart and try and interpret it, they could just go read what you have to say about the motors. Right. Right. Um, so I'd that's like talk a little bit about some of the things that are happening here on this side. Um, I haven't, like over the last couple of months, I haven't been posting as much because I've had a couple of other things going on. Um, I designed a frame and brought a frame to market. Um, and uh, I've been working on expanding mini quad test bench in a couple of different directions at once. Um, I brought on, uh, I don't know if you're familiar uh, with uh, Mark, uh, Sai FPV, um, but I brought him on. He does some really great detailed videos and he's he's got a really nice homemade um, dyno meter. So it's a little bit different from our static load testing in that it's using a weight attached to the motors and it, he's doing torque load analysis and stuff, mostly on smaller motors. So he's doing a lot of stuff here on this section of the website. You can see all the motors that he's been working on. Um, and then, you know, my stuff uh, for the static load test is here. I'm also bringing on, uh, actually just today, we started getting our first data in. Um, I'm bringing on Ryan Evans. Um, he's a pretty well-known name on the West Coast. Um, and he's been, a big, he's been a big proponent of the low KV, uh, high voltage stuff. And so I, I basically, we've replicated my thrust stand and my entire setup. And I sent everything out to him and he's gonna start doing low KV and high voltage testing. Um, and That's really already, exciting already working on that. We're working on basically collaborating to make sure that our, our data matches across. Uh, I tested a motor, I sent it to him, he tested it, and we're, we're making sure that all our numbers line up and that everything looks the same. Um, but we should have data coming in on that front um, here in the next couple of weeks. So that's really exciting because I've been wanting to see real numbers on that for a long time. Um, yeah. And I don't have the time to pursue that myself. So bringing Ryan on is a great addition. So he'll be posting data under here and his data will also be available in the data explorer um, once we get that going. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look then at the data explorer and it's right here at the top. You just go data explorer and you get this. So um, there's, you'll see there's a number of charts here. Uh, it starts out with kind of just a summary of each motor that you can, you can pull those motors in from the, from the list here. You can actually add multiple motors and do direct comparisons in terms of the entire range of props that have been tested on any given motor. Um, so these are kind of like averages for the peaks. They're the stuff that shows up in the data. You know, if you go view the regular view, um, it's the same charts that show up there. Um, but these, this lets you uh, compare it. So you know, I can I can add in two motors and, and yeah. Let's pick and let's pick like let's pick the hype train since those are the ones we brought up. So we've got down here AFGH. That list is a little long. I may need yeah. soon. soon <laughs> I think I'm going to have to find a way to filter that dynamically yeah. instead of just and having how about the how about the hype train bot grinder as a comparison? AFGH hype train bot grinder. There we go. Um, okay. And I do have the hype train Umagod, but that's yeah, that's, that's a 5S motor. Right. Which so, is the one that, that uh, that's the one that Ryan and I are doing our comparison on. So. Oh, gotcha. So what do you, what can you see from this chart about, what does this chart tell us about these motors? As you look at this chart, you know, what information is it giving us and what is it telling us about how these motors compare? Sure. So it's not giving you a ton of information other than being able to compare props directly between motors at each thrust, at each throttle point that they've been tested um, across. So you can choose down here, 75% throttle, um, 50% throttle and 25% throttle. The interesting thing about this is that I've chosen instead of scaling it to the data, I've chosen to keep the scale consistent. Mm -hmm. So you can actually get an idea of how that's changing across the throttle ranges there. And you mm -hmm. can see here, you know, if you hover over, you can compare the efficiency, the current draw, the thrust and all of that across the, the two um, motors that were tested on the same props. If they aren't tested, then you'll see some here where only one shows up or when only and, one shows up down here. And this is interesting because we always, when we talk about motor thrust and efficiency, it's very, very common to talk about full throttle. So we'll say a motor makes 1400 grams of thrust and draws 40 amps at full throttle. But a lot of times a motor's response curve will be very, very different at say 50 or 75% throttle than when it's really pushed to the edge. And 
seldom do we spend a lot of time at full throttle. So that may not be the best way to characterize a motor's performance. Huh? Right. And, and also when we get down to some of these other charts, there's better ways of showing that. In fact, this next chart here is, is actually extremely, um, extremely good at, at looking at the, that kind of variance. So there's two things that you can look at here. Um, one of this is by throttle percent and one of these is by thrust. So the one that's actually the most interesting is this one by thrust, because really when we're flying, that's what we care about, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at if, I'm, if I have a quad that weighs so much and my camera angle is so much, then it's gonna take a certain amount of thrust to make it fly forward at that angle and maintain altitude. So when we're flying, when we're just cruising around, what we care about is how much thrust is being produced at a given forward angle. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but um, right. for the most part that gives us kind of a window into what we're looking at. So here I can you're sort of you're off. sort of turning it around backwards instead of saying at a given throttle position how much thrust and how many amps does this motor pull. You're saying if I say I need to make 600 grams of thrust, at what throttle position and amps do, do different motors do that accomplish that goal? Correct. So I, that's, I don't actually have throttle position listed on this chart. And now that you mentioned that, maybe I should revise that um, so that it shows throttle position. But it does show relative efficiency at a given thrust point, which is and how much like how much wattage it's pulling. And it also throws in the motor weight. So you can get a comparison of like how heavy is it costing me to gain this type of efficiency? You know, how many grams of weight motor am I putting into this machine? Um, so, so for in, instance... Yeah, and keep keeping with the theme, can we put like the hype trains and maybe a couple T motors up there and see how they stack up? Yeah, well, let me show you how to filter this. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to pick the prop that you want. So let's choose a prop that's going to be tested on basically a huge range of, of motors. Uh, I test pretty much every single motor that crosses the bench on the HQ 5x4x3, the, the old school prop that has been around forever. Um, so that's going to give you the largest selection. Um, another one that I have tested a lot on is the V1S uh, 5043. So those are both good options. And then we can look at different kind of thrust points here. So, you know, if you're looking at a good cruising speed, the, the, I have the default set to 600 because that's kind of a fast forward clip on most quads. Um, you know, that's going to be, you know, six times four is like 2.4 kilograms of thrust output. Um, which is going to be moving you pretty fast at a pretty good angle, um, but not like full throttle. You know, that's a, that's a pretty solid cruising speed. So I'm going to go ahead and click go here and be aware this does take a little time to load because it's literally tuning through millions of points of data to generate this. Um, I do have caching set up. So the first time it loads, it's going to be slow. But if you reference the same data again, it'll be fast the second time. It loads. That wasn't too bad. No, it's not it too bad. bad. I, uh, I recently made some major changes to my server infrastructure. I've got a virtual host or a virtual server set up. It's actually still in my garage, but um, I'm running a big dual Xeon machine with wow. uh, virtualization. So I have a dedicated, basically a dedicated virtual machine specifically only to the back end. So right. it's only handling the database and data processing side for the, the motor data. And I've dedicated like six gigs of RAM and like six cores of the processor. <laughs> to just that. Um, so that it went from taking, you know, 40 seconds to maybe even timing out um, to only taking about 15 seconds maximum. So anyway, I digress. So, so we could ask the question then, if we want 600 grams of thrust out of the motor, what's the most efficient motor? And how right. would we answer? So here it's sorted by efficiency. And you can see that uh, this Z-Drone Raptor 2206 is coming in at just over five wow. grams. Five grams, that's five grams per watt is a really efficient motor. Yeah, yeah, and, but you can see it doesn't ordinary. drop dramatically fast. And we have well, a ton that kind of sit in this middle space here, you know, around yeah. four, four, four. Um, so, and then you can see as we, you know, it starts dropping off as we get into some of these other um, yeah. different designs here. But I mean, the, the lowest one is 3.4. So right. that's not too bad, but we can filter up here. Uh, this is just kind of a dynamic filter. So we could filter by T motor and by hype train. If we type in both of those things, then it's going to show me only T motor and only hype train motors. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gives us a, an idea of where we're at here. So you can see the freestyle is sitting here at four flat and the bot grinder is basically Just the same. Slightly, it's basically the same. And what's the top one? Um, so the top one is the F40 Pro 2, 
2400 KV, which is actually 2500 KV. Uh -huh. So that's interesting that that one uh, came in so efficient. Well, and that, that's actually true of the Bach grinder as well. That was one of the things that inspired me to ask you to make this video is, is some people said, oh, the Bach grinder is just a rehash of the, of the uh, hype train, the original hype train. But actually, the, the, the Bach grinder isn't actually a 2450 kV motor, is it? Yeah, it's actually 2550 when, it, when I did uh -huh. my testing. So it's significantly higher uh, kV than the, than the original hype train. I, I'm not sure if that was intentional or if it just kind of happened to be with by the time they got the windings and the magnets and everything all put in place that it just ended up being a, a higher mm -hmm. kV than what was stated. Um, same thing with the F40 Pro 2. You know, like it was stated to be, it was originally targeted for 2400 kV, stated to be 2400 kV, but by the time they finalized everything, it's target, you know, it, it's coming out at 25, 2500 kV nominal. Um, and I did yeah. confirm that with T-Motor, and that is what their nominal, like what they test for when they're doing their quality control. So that, that F40 Pro 2 actually looks like, on this chart at least, it's, it's pretty far ahead. It's a 30-gram motor, 4.46 uh, grams per watt at 600 grams compared to, like, uh, the Hype Train Freestyle is, a, well, it's 30 grams and closer to 4 grams right. per watt. Right, so there's a little bit of a difference there. And obviously, this is one point of data. Um, yeah. I, it would need multiple testing across multiple range to get any sort of um, – you know, statistically relevant um, data point, but this sure. gives kind of a, a ballpark figure. Uh, it's it's more. Um, now, what happens? What happens if we take that thrust up to something closer to full throttle? I, to, I right. wonder how so, numbers change. You know, let's obviously you're going to get as you go up in throttle, you're getting a net efficiency loss period across mm -hmm. the board. So it's going to taper off. But the question is how much. So then we could go up to like 1,100 grams, which is going to be. I mean, that's fast. That's yeah. like you're hauling butt at 1100 grams. That's, you know, over four kilograms of thrust for the whole quad that weighs what, 680 grams. So that's, yep. you're moving. And this is, this is fascinating table because I mean, it allows you to answer questions like what's the lightest motor that lets me get 1100 grams of thrust mm -hmm. or what's the, you know, what's the, what motors under 30 grams give me at least three and a half grams of efficiency, etc. Right, right. So, so let's here see. you can see we've dropped off to about 3.5 as the peak here. And the, and the order has changed too. Say what now? The order has changed yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So the EFA is pulling ahead in terms of efficiency. The Hawk Sky, um, the original AT, not the AT2, is coming ahead. We got the Gorillas, which have always Being bigger motors. Bigger okay. motors are, are seeming to do better at the higher thrust. The They're more Cobra efficient. The, yep. And that's the 2210, or the 20, the, yeah, the. 2010, 2210, that may be a typo. I think it's a 2210. Um, the Cobra, um, you know, your Amex, the Amex Innos have impressed me with their efficiency. There's the other, the Hawk Sky AT2. Um, and there's your F40 Pro, then it's still right at the top. Interestingly enough, it has lost, you know, it's, it's only lost a couple of spots. It's only yeah. down by like 0 0.01 from the top yeah. end. So it's yeah. still getting, it's still ranking in the top efficiency there. Well, and those, and those motors that are more efficient, that's like a, the EFA is a 36 gram, Hawk Sky is a 36 gram. So those motors are, are bigger and heavier and manage to eke out a slight efficiency gain if you're right. trying to draw a lot of thrust, but the, uh, the T motor is still doing pretty good. Right, but you got the interesting exception to that is the Amex Inno here, it's a 2305. Somehow wow. pulling out the same efficiency, which is, that's, I was, that's the thing I noted most with the Amax Inno motors is, is that they, they seem to have an efficiency edge, especially in the top third of the throttle compared to a lot of other motors in the same class. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is interesting we, stuff that, that doesn't come out necessarily unless you're, unless you're looking at this. Um, let's do one more comparison that I'm dying to see, which is, can you choose a, a heavier prop like a 50-50 mm -hmm. and see how these motors compare? So let's look at the, the uh, let's see, what do we got here? Um, the Lumineer 5x5x3 um, five by five by is probably the one I've tested on the most motors. Okay. So we can leave it at the same 1,100 grams, and we'll see what that, what that does. Oh, one other thing to note is that this, is, this filter is only done on key down. So if you uh, click yeah. load... It'll it'll load the whole list, and then you have to come up here and hit enter again. Yeah, I know. I noticed. I noticed that a bunch of other motors snuck in, but still very interesting. Okay, uh, so here at the on the heavier motor, we've got the F80, 2200 kV coming in here at the top by actually a significant jump. 
Yeah, well, that's a that's a forty two gram motor though. That if the F eighty is a beast, but it is a it's not a light motor. And you've got the Champion, which is a very similar volume size actually, with the twenty two ten versus a twenty four oh eight coming mm-hmm. in close, and it's also almost the same weight. So, um, and that that T motor F forty Pro is still relatively up there. Yep. There it is. Hang it's only the big boys. Couple points off. Wow. Um, and then the that. Max Inos are, are right up there too. There's the EFA. Um, now where's the? Go ahead and redo the redo the filter, will you? Where's right. that? Where do the hype trains come in? So you've got the Umagod squeaking ahead, which isn't too surprising given it's a lower KV motor. The heavier prop sure. loading is going to affect it less because um, it's trying to push lower. You know, it's not trying to push as many RPMs out of it. So here's the yeah. bot grinder at 3.33. And wow. so just basically equivalent, well, just a little bit behind the F40 Pro, but not a whole lot. And then the freestyle mm-hmm. is now down here. That's uh, interesting that the lower KV freestyle is doing worse on the heavier prop in terms of yeah. efficiency. You'd expect a lower KV motor to be able to be more efficient on a heavier prop, just intuitively. Yeah, and, and there may that may be an anomaly in the data. It, it, again, it's hard to say without looking at a larger sample size. Um, okay. But um, we could look across several of the heavier props and yeah. you know, kind of get a picture from that. So yeah. if we wanted to look at, um, let's see, I think I've tested most of those on, let's see, uh, did I test that? I'm trying to think what other heavier props I've tested that on that would also be in the same, in the same. And, and, and while, you're, while you're doing that, I'll say what's what I think is so interesting about this insight is that this is an apples to apples comparison in a way that other things aren't because we're saying 11 at whatever point this motor makes 1100 grams of thrust. So you'll see in, normally we peg motors based on throttle position and usually 100% throttle position. But as you pointed out, thrust is what matters. And that's the fair way to compare motors is you want this much thrust out of it. How does it perform? I right. think that's a very interesting insight that you just don't get anywhere else that I know of. Yeah, and I think, honestly, I think this chart is probably one of the most useful charts on the website. Um, there's, there's some other things that interesting data that can be gleaned from further down, but this is kind of a good, so, okay, here we go. So we have um, the bot grinder and the freestyle right here on the Cyclone mm-hmm. and the Umagod. So, yeah, you've got, they're, they're basically tied on this, on the yeah. Cyclone 5046, which is a very similar torque load to the Lumineer, tiny bit heavier just mm-hmm. a squidge heavier than the, than the, um, than the Lumineer prop in terms of the, the actual load that it puts on the motor. Interesting. Now let's, let's move on to the, the throttle ramps and the response time so we can right. see some other ways of, because that, that chart is not, some people might go, well, clearly I just need to buy the T-Motor F43. I mean, uh, the F40 Pro, because why would you ever buy the F40 or the F60 since it beats them on this chart? So, so what are some other ways to look at the motors get more of an insight into how they perform other than just that. Basically, even here, you're looking at sustained thrust, which is only going to tell you part of how a motor is going to impact your flight. Um, I mean, that is going to impact it, but there are other things here. Um, So the the throttle ramps here are just going to show you the, the, basically the linearity of the throttle, like how, how flat is the throttle curve um, and, and how much does it like peak up at the end. And this is interesting here you know, when you're looking at different size props and how they, they change. So this is still looking at a specific motor and then looking at the range of props across that. Right. So that's, that's one motor there and a bunch of different props. And basically a straight diagonal line would be a perfectly linear response. And what you're seeing is that straight, you know, going between the two points would, would be uh, linear. So here you can see that some of them are, they're all a little bit curved but some right. of them have less of a rise than others. So your lighter yes. props are typically going to give you a more linear uh, feel than your heavier loaded props. Okay, interesting. Um, especially on high torque motors, you know, where the, right. the motor, like on, a, it, it's an, actually a really interesting discussion when you talk about how that loading translates. <coughs> on, a, on a very high torque, low, like kind of mid KV motor, you're going to get yep. into a situation where you've simply maxed out the RPMs that that prop is, is you know, and that at that load is going to hit. And even if you go up in torque, you're not going to gain anything more from it in terms right. of in in terms of thrust and maximum output. 
Now, we'll talk here in a minute about other things that you might gain from it. But in terms of the linearity of this, you're going to hit a spot where it's very flat and it's just not going to get any flatter, um, mm -hmm. you know, yep. at that KV and at that, at that, uh, with that prop. Um, so for instance, if you test a, you know, like a, a 2206 on a very light loaded prop, like an HQ 50. Okay, buddy, but I'm on shoo shoo. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. That's Where okay. was I? So for instance, if you take, um, like a, a 2206 motor, that's like, 2400 kv yeah slap an hq 5040 uh v1s on there tri-blade and you spin that up and then you compare it to like a 2207 on the same prop but it is essentially the same kv you're going to see some rise because of the increased torque mm -hmm. but then if you throw like the lumineer or the the dowel we were just looking at on there you're going to see a larger gap in performance on the heavier prop with the higher torque motor than you will on the lighter prop with the higher torque mm -hmm. So there's still going to be a rise, but the, the, the rise will be greater with a, motor, with a prop that requires more torque to spin. So that's, that's kind of what you're going to see here out of this, uh, out of this chart. And, and that chart, can all, they can show, uh, you're showing thrust right now, but it can also show RPMs. Voltage, Volt, you can see I get a lot of noise in my voltage. The voltage line. sag and the um, amp, maybe do some smoothing on that, huh? Oh, that's yeah, pretty. Uh, I just, I want to put that on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's like art. <laughs> All right. What else have we got? What else have we got? All right. So, um, come down here. These are looking at this, like basically the full set of data at a particular um, point. So you can see the at the the throttle position at a particular throttle position. Right. So the acceleration. These are basically acceleration curves, and this is partly interesting. This is kind of leading into the next thing. This chart is only so interesting because you can only look at one motor and one prop at a time. Um, but it tells, it shows you all the data at the same time in a, something that's I a little see. bit less noisy. So we're looking at, we're looking at, uh, let's see, we're looking at volts is the orange line. Uh, thrust is the orange volts, line. Thrust is the orange, volts is the red line. Uh, uh, RPMs is the blue and uh, current is the, the green. Right. So, so we see that the current spikes as the motor begins to spin and then settles in. We see that the RPMs and the thrust go up together. And I guess basically what you'd want to see is you'd want to see a rapid rise in RPMs and thrust, and that would indicate a more responsive motor. Correct. So, mm -hmm. and that's where, that's where this starts getting interesting. Um, this is kind of interesting because you can see the ramp. And then this is really why it's really interesting because you can see the full test at one go here. And then you can Ooh, zoom in on part of it so if you wanted to see like you know you can you can look oh at that's uh that's sexy how do you zoom back out is there uh, yeah, it's right? this button right here so yeah still. so what you've got there is you've got the 25 50 75 and 100 percent throttle right and you're not doing a ramp so much as you are going from zero to 25 zero to 50 rapidly right. and seeing just how if you just jam the throttle as hard as you possibly yeah. can how does the motor respond in this case, it's, you know, in my code, it outputs an instantaneous jump of throttle. So basically, yeah. I'm seeing when, you, when that motor is put under the absolute maximum request that it can get, how, what it's capable of doing. How, how many ESCs have you exploded by going from zero to 100% throttle instantaneously on a big motor? Uh, <laughs> Come well, on. That's, that's why I use the old school X Rotor 40 amp ESC in my testing, because yeah. I have killed one. <laughs> um, You've never killed one? Not, not that ESC, no. That, those things are, they were huge by the old standards. By modern standards, they're ginormously gigantic. Um, but they're huge. They have really large FETs. They have a huge capacitor on them. They're rated for success. Um, yeah. So they're, uh, they're extremely robust ESCs. I have, I have yet to blow one up in any circumstance. <laughs> Flying Very it. Neat. Any, anything what, else. They're just what do you use as your power supply? I'm curious. I don't want to get too off track. Why, why would we not do that? But what's your power supply? Because it's, it's so got to be. That's an interesting question. And that's part of why I had taken a break from testing for a while, because I was working on, on some issues. Originally, I was using a Venom variable um, voltage power supply. Uh, well, actually, originally, originally, I was using like a 16 amp hour um, battery pack. But that required basically stopping between each prop and recharging it back to nominal yep. voltage. 
uh, yep. the voltage from being different. And even then there was still variation between voltage. So when you're trying to eliminate variables, a battery pack does not work. Um, so what I ended up doing was uh, Venom donated one of their uh, like uh, 1300 watt um, variable voltage power supplies. Um, and that worked for a long time, but it had a problem in the rapid transitions of, of power, the rapid changes in, in current draw would um, create a voltage sag that convinced it that there was a short circuit and it would right. just shut right. off in right. the middle of the test. So um, I had a giant car audio capacitor in line and a battery in line with that in, all in parallel to prevent those sags from reaching back into the power supply. And that still sometimes didn't work, especially <laughs> on very large motors like the F80, the higher KV, large stator motors. I talked about it in a few of my test results um, where it just, it would trigger the thing and I could only test up to a certain weight of prop before it just completely triggered it every time. Um, and a couple of months ago, uh, I think just used to the, just due to the constant abuse that it started triggering more and more frequently uh -oh. to the point where it was disrupting the tests even on lower, um, lower powered motors. Uh, so I had to completely rethink my power structure and I ended up buying um, a, a pretty high end constant current power supply that was current limited. So instead of like shutting off when there's a short circuit, it just limits the current. So what I've done is I'm using that same 16 amp hour battery in line to allow the current spikes to exceed the current mm. limit of the, of the, um, right. of the power supply. But then and the power supply drops off, the battery sort of fills in the gap. Right. And the battery key or the power supply keeps the battery voltage constant. So they're kind of, they're, they work together um, to create a very, very consistent, very even power supply. Um, and the results, I did a bunch of testing uh, during the transition to confirm that the results matched what I was getting before um, with the old setup in terms of the acceleration curves and all of that stuff. Um, and it, it, it's, 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 it's very, very close um, to what I was getting before. So everything is, everything is still comparable. So to, you know, obviously for me, that's the biggest question is to make sure that everything, every result is comparable to the other results that I've gotten. And I, I do consistent checking across, you know, multiple data points to make sure that, that I'm not getting drift, that I'm not getting anything drifting out of calibration or anything shifting that's going to impact the comparability of those results. And, and again, that's been a big thing that I've been working towards as I'm bringing uh, Ryan on board uh, for the low KV testing is to make sure that our two setups are as identical as possible so that the data in here is still comparable. Good. What else, uh, what else does the Motor uh, Explorer show you? So this last one is probably one of the more critical. In this one, in combination with the other efficiency chart that we were looking at, are probably the two really critical points of data. So what this one can do is it can compare acceleration curves between motors and props. So you can choose any motor and any prop and look mm -hmm. at the very fine details of how that is accelerating and how it's handling those changes in acceleration. So... For instance, let's look at the ones we were talking about here. Um, okay. We're going to take a look at the hype train freestyle. And uh, let's look at what, what kind of prop do we want to look at? Um, the V1S. Uh, uh, yeah, the V1S. Well, I think the 5x4x3 by by is a little light. Um, I, don't, I don't know how many people are running that. What about the Cyclone uh, 545 or 546? Yeah, we Pretty can do that. Let's see. Um, and then... And then the hype train the box, box grinder. Box grinder, yeah. And how about that F40 Pro 2? Yeah. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. Uh -huh. You guys, you guys got to be quiet in there, please. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one. No, no. <laughs> Okay, F40 Pro 2. So we'll bring up the F40 Pro 2 here in the same Cyclone 5045. So awesome. we've got here, we've got a true 2450 KV. Yep. We've got a 2550 KV and a 2500 KV. Okay. So, um, and then we can choose what data we want to look at. Um, you know, we can load it all up, but it gets really noisy yet. So you can see, you, know, you can barely tell. What's yeah, going that's, on. that's a little cluttered. With what if we looked at stuff? just RPMs for now? Because we know which motor is more efficient. So volts and amps, but what about like just thrust or just RPMs? Right. So, um, 
Amps are into what I usually end up looking at when I'm looking at this. Like I just check to make sure the volts are close. Obviously you're going to get some yeah. difference because as current changes, the, you know, the, you're going to get a little different sag in the, even, even on a constant power supply like mine, you're right. dealing with wires and things that have resistance in them. Even the internal resistance of the windings themselves can make a difference um, in the voltage sag. Um, so I just, once I've confirmed they're close, I generally disregard voltage. And RPMs has a little bit of noise in it. I get some shifting in just because, again, it's a super noisy environment. So mm -hmm. I, the, the thrust data tends to be um, consistent enough for what I'm okay. looking at. Again, once I've cons confirmed there's no anomalies, I'll usually. So what I really am interested in is thrust and amps. Okay. And what we see is the, the 2450K hype train, which is the original hype train, which is legitimately 2450KV, is making less thrust, and Which you would expect, you would expect. Got, the twenty four fifty and the or the twenty five fifty and the twenty five hundred kV are very very close um, in terms but of thrust we, produced. But what what is mm -hmm. the interesting part is this yep. right? The knee and the the kind of the the acceleration curve and then the knee and the roll off is going to tell you a ton about the motor in terms of of you know what kind of thrust we're looking at and how quickly that thrust onsets. So this is basically telling you how, how, how quickly that, um, that motor can, can change the RPMs of that, um, of that prop across the, 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 the responsiveness, if you will. Correct. Now, that, that's an interesting comment because when people talk about responsiveness, there's actually two different things they talk about and two different things they mean. And I don't think people don't often stop to think about those two different things. Um, one of those things is the responsiveness in terms of the, the ability of the craft to accelerate forward. Right. So a lot of people, when they say responsiveness, they're actually not meaning responsiveness. They're meaning acceleration. Right. There's they're meaning how th sort of throttle response, if you will. When you push the throttle, how quickly does the craft jump? And you can change that simply by making the quad lighter. Right. Or, you know, there's a lot of things you can, in, you can increase throttle boost in, in the new beta flight. You can, you know, you can, you can just, there's a lot of things that you can tweak throttle curve on the, 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 you know, on your, on your, um, on your radio. There's a lot of things you could increase that make it move faster when you pump the throttle. And, you know, even something as simple as changing the prop to a, a pitchier prop is going to, is going to change how that relationship changes. So mm -hmm. what I'm talking about when I talk about responsiveness is, it's a different feeling in the air. It has to do with when you, when you end a roll, how quickly does that roll come to a stop? When you, well, what, we, what we mean is how quickly does the motor change speed? Right. Not how quickly does the quad change speed, if you will. And that affects tuning and handling more than it affects sort of stick feel. Right. I mean, it definitely affects stick feel, but it affects it in a way that's more subtle in the, a way that I think not as many people really understand in terms of it, um, you know, it feels sharper. It feels crisper when the motor changes speed more quickly. You, you well, end up with... And you, you, get better, you get better prop wash handling is the big one to me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to a certain extent, there's, there's a lot that goes into prop wash, in, including, the, you know, the baseline of thrust, which is why six inch props tend to have very little prop wash, even though they have very slow response times. Mm -hmm. um, it has to do with where in the RPM curve, the, the thrust onsets as well that, as response time. That sounds like uh, a topic for another video. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, but it's, uh, it, it definitely impacts a lot of things, uh, you know, in terms of crispness, versus smoothness. Um, you know, a, a prop that responds slower, a motor that responds slower is going to feel smoother, but it's going to be harder to tune and it's gonna be, you know, harder to get that kind of locked in, really tight feeling that, that uh, a lot of pilots are looking for. So it, I, I kind of always say that I would much rather have a, a setup that's extremely responsive and extremely snappy that I can, learn to fly smoother mm -hmm. than to have a setup that feels a little bit sluggish and flies smooth on its, its own, but I can't it's make it. Like, kind of, what I was going to say was, it's kind of like the argument that, you know, if it's cold, you can always put on a jacket, but if it's hot, you can't take off your clothes to pass a certain point. <laughs> right. Well, you can always, you make it. <laughs> yeah, 
You know, we smooth out a snappy quad, but it can be, you can't really snap up a, a smooth one. Uh, okay, so what you're seeing here, I think, can you explain exactly how you're seeing which motor has the sharper response? Right, so what you're looking for is the shape of this knee. Um, so mm -hmm. the, the more vertical this line and the less time that it takes to transition from, um, you know, from vertical to horizontal, the more the more quickly it's changing speeds and the more quickly it's breaking. So some of this here, like this knee, the shape of this knee here changed a tiny bit with the new power supply as we mm -hmm. were talking about. So, um, and the F40 Pro 2 was on the old power supply. So there, it is being accentuated here a tiny yeah. bit, but just, a, it, I mean, just a smidgen. It um, seems like whichever one, it seems like the purple one is ahead here because it's getting, it's more to the left and it's getting higher, more to the left. Correct. Accelerated faster then. And you'll see the difference as you change motor sizes, you know, the larger the, the motor, the more vertical this line is going to be and the sharper the cutoff is going to be, the roll off is going to be here. Um, so that's all part of, you know, part of what's, what's going on into this and understanding this. So, you, you know, this gap here is the difference in thrust. Mm -hmm. This gap here, the horizontal gap is the difference in acceleration. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, absolutely. And we do see that for the Hype Train uh, 2450, which has the lower thrust and the slower response, but it also has fewer amps. It's, mm -hmm. So it's a more, it, and that was, I think, one of the design targets they had for that motor was to be a little bit more efficient at the price of a little bit of thrust. That's just sort of a trade-off you make. Right. Okay. What else, is there anything else in here? Um, I mean, other than the fact that you can basically add a slew of those in here and then you can turn mm -hmm. on and off, like if you want to look closer at multiples, you can click here and turn on and off the different data points. And if you hover over, you can, you know, you can deal with that. Also, you can uh, download a PNG of this chart by clicking there. Mm -hmm. So I do that a lot when I'm looking at stuff and want to send somebody information. Um, unfortunately, as of yet, there isn't a way to link to a dynamic chart. Oh, that would be cool. I'm working on it, but it's because of the way the back end is driven, it's a little complicated. Um, so that's going to be a feature that I'm looking at adding here um, before too long. But you're down at the bottom. So again, we're looking at 100% right now, but we can look at, you know, not only the acceleration, we, look, we can look at the braking. So if we want to look at 100% to, um, to idle, so that's our braking points here. And you can see the braking across these is actually very similar. Um, yeah, I do. Break. I do see that they they come down at about the same rate. Right. Uh, is the braking uh, uh, is the braking a function of the motor or more the ESC? Yeah, it's it's kind of more the ESC, but also the motor. Um, and it it also has to do with your power train too. Interestingly enough, with that current limited power supply, if I don't have the battery in line, it, it, the taper the braking taper is much lower. Like it, it tapers off much more slowly. Um, with the battery, the battery seems to absorb some of that current. And you mm -hmm. can see why here. Look at this. This is the this is the current draw, right? Yeah. This is zero. Right. It just, yeah. This is zero here. Okay. The current is oh, right. negative. Negative. It's flowing backwards into the battery. Right. So negative yeah. thirteen amps on that box. Wow. Wow. So it, across four motors, if you're breaking all four suddenly, that's like, you know, forty plus amps flowing backwards through the system. And that's exactly. why it's slower on, that's why the braking is slower on when there's no battery in line with the just a power supply. The power supply is pushing back against that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. And is that gonna, like, is that gonna damage your battery? 40 amps, yikes. No, uh, I mean, no more than the, uh, the 200 amps per motor that's being drawn out of it during instant acceleration, so. Um, because it's only for a fraction of a second that you see right. that 40 amps. So this, pretty this quickly. is, the time in microseconds here across the bottom. Uh -huh. So um, you can see that it's like, this is still the only, let's see, that's, or that's 300 milliseconds out here, I think. Okay. Uh, the, this is 300 milliseconds. So if this is, this is like, by the time you're at like 70 milliseconds, it's already almost back at zero. Yeah, so okay. It's, it's a very tiny spike. Um, and if you look at the acceleration spike, I mean, that's 156 amps out of one motor yeah. on, on those throttle changes. So that's, uh, that's significant uh, in terms of <coughs> the acceleration that you're getting. 
out of that. Um, but again, it's by the time you get to 70 milliseconds, it's already almost back down to nominal voltage. So, um, but that's, that's uh, kind of the extreme. And it, this, is a, this is an interesting indicator of actually the mass and the moment of inertia of, the, of the, both the bell and the prop together. Mm -hmm. So the higher the moment of inertia of the prop, the higher the moment of inertia of the bell, the larger this current spike is going to be. And also, it's, there's a relationship between that current spike and stator size. The larger the stator size, the higher that current spike is going to be uh, as well. Um, and that's, honestly, this is what kills ESCs. It's not the sustained mm. current that kills ESCs. Oh, yeah, no, it's the spikes. It's these spikes, because you're going to see the same spikes when you get in a crash. And your prop right. hits something, it's going to be even more accentuated than this. So, I mean, you're looking at, like I said, 200 amp instantaneous spikes out of these in the right circumstances. Um, and that repeated over time is what damages and will eventually burn uh, ESCs. Uh, and that's why KISS implemented their, um, you know, their current limiting uh, to right. try and prevent some of that from happening. But the downside of that is, as we're talking about on acceleration here, that current is translates into torque. So right. if you're limiting that current, you're limiting the torque, you're limiting the torque and you're also limiting the acceleration. Uh, and I've, I've done some testing that shows the, the KISS ESCs that have the current limiting turned on uh, have a fairly dramatic, at least slower acceleration curve on every prop um, because of yeah, that. I've heard, I've heard I, I used to hear it suggested that one reason KISS ran smoother was that they, it used to be the only ESCs with current limiting were KISS ESCs and right. that that re resulted in, that it was the KISS ESCs that made KISS fly so smooth, not the KISS flight controller. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a combination of factors, but I definitely think that, um, that the current limiting plays a role. And you can turn the current limiting on in um, certain BL Heli 32 ASCs that have the yep. sensor yep. on board and now as well and get a similar feel out of that. Um, I mean, there's yeah. a lot that goes into making it smooth. The commutation methodology that KISS uses is slightly different, um, and that has a huge play in the smoothness factor. It was like going from... Um, you know, BL Heli back in the day to BL Heli S and then from BL Heli S to BL Heli 32, like you can tell the difference in smoothness between them just because of slight changes in the way the commutations are calculated as the motor rotates. So there's a lot that goes into that. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at here uh, in terms of, of how, to, how to read this, this data. And so, you know, let's talk a little bit about the practical outcome of this. So okay. we all these things that you can see here, but like, how does that translate into how I choose a motor? Like, how am I? Yeah, going I like it. let's 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 go out on that. Let's wrap up with that, and then we'll we'll call it. So how so, do you how what how do you how do you use this data to choose like a motor or to decide between different motors? Right. So obviously, you know, there's a couple of factors that you you need to look at while you're choosing a motor. The weight of the motor plays a role. I mean, people say, oh, but you know, the power overcomes the weight. Well, that's true to a certain extent in certain circumstances, but it's not true at equivalent thrust. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, it can accelerate more, but you're still going to feel that in certain circumstances, especially if you're racing or something where the cornering matters. There's, there's going to be certain, um, you know, like the, the stops on roll and pitch are going to feel different with a heavier motor. Um, you can overcome that to a certain extent with torque and with acceleration, but that's still a, something, a factor that plays a role. So you're looking at weight, you're looking at acceleration, you're looking at efficiency, um, you're looking at um, your flying style, the spaces that you usually fly in, um, or the spaces that you're wanting to fly in, and you're combining all of that kind of looking at all the variables involved to make that choice of a motor. So for instance, if you fly mostly in uh, tight proximity space um, and you fly a really snappy, what do they call it, juicy these days? Is that the term? Um, <laughs> style. Um, the, then you're going to look for a motor with very fast response, but not necessarily a ton of top end. In, you know, and then depending on if you're flying in a big open space where you want to get very quickly from one place to another, you're going to look for a different motor that has maybe more top end and where maybe the, the instant response isn't as critical because you have more space to accelerate, more space to handle. Um, if you're looking for, for that snappy, again, you're going to go for a torquier motor. If you don't care as much about snappy, you may not care as much about torque. So it's, again, which is the, the, the slope of this curve right here. Um, 
that's where snappy means sharp, smooth, you know, or if you don't care as much, then you can, you can handle something with a little bit less of a curve there. <clears throat> so, um, you know, the, between this chart up here, looking at efficiency at equivalent thrust, kind of knowing what throttle points that you're used, that you're used to using, where your cruising points are um, in terms of the kind of thrust output that you're looking at for your cruising versus when you need to accelerate. Um, making that decision again, as we talked about last time, between 2207 and 2306, as far as saying, do I need lots of top end? I'm gonna choose the 2207. Do I want low throttle control? I'm gonna choose the 2306. Um, and then looking at all of those factors together and making that decision um, based on all of those flying styles um, and based on what you're seeing here is, uh, is kind of what you're working towards. But it takes, you know, it takes time and practice to, to kind of figure out how all of that works together. Um, so it's... Well, I think the good, news is, the good news is that thanks to, uh, thanks to you, the data is there. Right. And now data nerds can go dig into it and spend all their time comparing motors um, <laughs> and maybe gl glean some insights. I mean, ultimately, the, the, for having the data is the first step to, uh, to having insights like that. So Absolutely. thank you very uh, much. Nice. I spend a ton of time just going through all this. Every time I do a new set of tests, I'll, I'll spend time comparing and looking at different motors that are similar, um, figuring out where they all fit together. Um, before I do my write-ups, I, I spend a lot of time kind of looking at how they fit in, where their best application is going to be, what kind of props are going to be the most ideal for that setup. And all of that can be gleaned from this if you, if you kind of spend the time getting a feel for the data. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Ryan. Uh, that's mini quad test bench is Ryan's site. Uh, there's a link in the video description, of course, uh, tons of motor reviews and the data explorer to get uh, more detailed information. Anything else? Uh, anything else we need to plug Ryan? <laughs> My new frame. <laughs> oh yeah. What's your new frame? Tell us about uh, it. The crush light. If, uh, if you're interested in supporting mini quad test bench, um, I, I have been working on this frame for quite a while. Just, it was a personal project. Some people were interested in it. So I went, went through uh, and actually got it produced and it's on Heli Nation now. Um, okay. We'll put a link down in the video description as well. Of and course. I think we'll be doing a giveaway with Brain 3D here in a couple of weeks. Ooh, so Everybody loves it. Actually, this is cool. It's going to be a fully built, fully tuned quad. So it'll Whoa. have... It'll have okay. uh, well, I got to ask, what motors are you putting on it? I, I haven't actually decided yet. I'm still trying oh, to Oh, come but, on. Um, wait, before <laughs> we announce it, uh, you know, on, on Brain 3D, uh, I will make that choice. What do you think? What motors do you think I should put on? <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I'm really loving 2207 these days. That being said, I have 2306 Ladribs on one of my main freestyle quads, and it flies really good. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. I, maybe it, it's more the motor than the exact stator size. Uh, the other motor that really stood out to me once upon a time was the EFA 2407. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something to be had for a big motor if it's tuned right. But um, I, I think uh, maybe like a high KV, like a 2500 KV 2207 would be sort of what I would pull out of thin air probably. Right. Yeah, I got a couple of options. I've got, I don't know, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking in a couple of different directions here, but it's going to have the new Akon F4 flight controller. Um, Akon's providing that and an Akon, AK32 4-in-1. Uh, nice. ESC on there and uh, that's a good ESC. Providing some other stuff, so there'll be a there'll okay. be a lot of good stuff in it, and uh, that'll be up for grabs on uh, Brain 3D in a couple of weeks. Okay, well, I'll link to I'll put all the relevant links down in the video description so everybody can know about that stuff. Ryan, thank you very much. That is gonna do it. Happy flying, everybody. See you. And we're out. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much. That was great. I really love it. Yeah. Um. And. Like I said, I, there's some interesting stuff in the Data Explorer here on <clears throat> where I did some comparisons, ESC, ESC stuff. Um, I did like a, a two-way.